So let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning. When the folks in IBM Rochester who were producing both the System 36 and the System 38, both at the mid and lower end of the marketplace, when the Rochester folks who were producing both of those systems went to the corporation and said, we want to build a new platform that is the combination of the System 36 and the System 38. What they did was they built themselves a, a presentation that told IBM, here's what we see in this lower end of the marketplace. The folks who are buying our systems in the small and medium business space are buying it to run solutions. There are a lot of solutions on System 36, not so many on System 38, but the core value proposition that we can bring to the marketplace is to be the best possible business solution platform. So here are the things every application that is intended for business is going to want to solve. It's going to have critical business data, but, but the application doesn't want to have to manage that, particularly where you put it on disk and how you find it and all that sort of thing, how you do all your relational stuff. They don't want to deal with that. They're going to have to have security. So many people back in the 70s and 80s who were writing applications had to integrate their own security that they built themselves. They would want the platform to do that. They would want it to be flexible enough that they didn't have to say, well, if you're a, you know, two or three users, you use this system. Otherwise, if you're five or 10 people, you use this. And let me tell you, back in those days, there were some applications that had to deal with, depending on how big you were, you had to have different versions. They don't want that. Okay. Now, this may seem natural today, but at the time, it was quite revolutionary. And another piece of that was... They would like it, the application developers would like it, if all the pieces that they needed would be integrated into the platform so they didn't have to have dependencies. They didn't have to assume that somebody had bought some other package. And then finally, the investment protection. I already mentioned when I talked about the machine interface before, if they write a piece of code today, they don't want to have to rewrite it just because the vendor, the hardware vendor, came up with a new family of processors. And yet, that was the way the world worked back then. And so the architecture was put together for the AS400 that had DB24i and single level store put together, this object-based architecture, all those things that I talked about before. Now, throughout the course of the rest of this presentation, I'm gonna be delving into how each of those pieces, while they do still exist in the IBM I architecture, okay, they have evolved through time. But before that, I want to talk a bit about this, this message that we drew you in to the web, webinar with, which is that IBM I is not just AS400. If you look at today's IBM I strategy, it has these three core components, has since I became chief architect 15 years ago. Okay, We are the solutions platform. We do things so that our Solutions vendors have what they need to build today's and tomorrow's applications. We give you choices on how you implement your solution, whether it's the languages that you use or how you deploy that thing in a cloud, hybrid cloud, whatever you want to do. And then we want to make sure that we give you choices on who you can hire. We don't want you to have to go and hire only people who know this platform. And then no matter what we do, we're going to integrate what we have giving you as integrated a solution as we possibly can. That is how, as a business, we have been able to continue to grow, especially over the course of the last 10 to 12 years, uh, the core of when I've been chief architect. We have spent more of our time growing than not, okay? And we've been able to do it because of this strategy. But if you look at what the AS400 could have been for that strategy, it just doesn't measure up. Okay, if you talk about the solutions on the platform, yes, AS400 had solutions when it initially came out, but those solutions were not modern and they weren't mainstream in IBM. Okay, the things that we want people to be able to do, like using the latest, best IBM technology, AS400 was on its own. Everything we had in the AS Rider was unique to us, and we could not have continued to invest in the advancement of that technology separate from the rest of IBM. 
We were also tied to old technology in the in the things that AS400 had, and there was no way on the AS400 we would have been able to incorporate with the initial architecture that we had things like mobile interfaces or the consumption of real-time data from sensors and other Internet of Things. And, and you'll understand why as I go through the evolution of this, okay? And yeah, yeah, we had things even way back then called service bureaus, which were similar to cloud, but they weren't cloud. Then if you look at the second aspect of our platform, open, no, we were proprietary. Until we did PACE, and it was an accommodation, and we'll get there in the presentation, we didn't have anything that could be considered open, okay? We couldn't do open source languages. We couldn't do cloud type technologies. And we were definitely tied to the things that were unique to IBM I for hiring people in. This is one of the reasons why people still tend to try to hire people who have AS400 specific knowledge, even though people who come to IBM I today can probably use many of the, um, many of the pieces of knowledge and tools that they had that they learned at school outside of IBMI to manage IBMI and to code on IBMI today. Now it is true that we did have a very integrated platform. That was true. It was part of our personality that continues today. It helped drive the low total cost of ownership and so on. And the AS400 value proposition certainly was around delivering simplicity and providing exceptional security and so on. Okay, but we were not able to leverage other parts of IBM. Over the years, we have had to evolve this architecture so that we could incorporate things like, for example, the newest things in database, whether that's row and column access control, temporal support, whatever we wanted to do, that had to come from an, a collaboration across IBM and, in fact, across the whole uh, relational database technology. We had to incorporate into our security things like single sign-on and other security and authentication method mechanisms like um, Kerberos. We had to be able to incorporate and integrate open source things because that's what our solution providers needed. We had to be able to do virtualization, not just with our subsystems and the ability to, using our security model, hide uh, data from people who should never see it. But we also had to be able to do things across virtual machines. And then as the, as the machine advanced from generation to generation, we had to be able to take advantage of those things and then converge with what AIX was doing and ultimately Linux on Power was doing and take advantage of some of the things that were being built into the power processor specifically for them, while they also got to take advantage of some of the things that were being built specifically for us. Now, as I go through the rest of this presentation, I will be putting a little icon down in the corner top showing you which part of the architecture I'm talking about as I do this evol evolution. So here, notice I'm talking about that technology independent machine interface as I describe the layered architecture of the original operating system upon which IBM I is based, which is OS 400. Okay, way back then we had this technology independent machine interface that separated two parts of the operating system, but really the operating system was sort of three parts. There was the stuff above the MI, which is called OS 400, and then there were two microcode layers, vertical and horizontal microcode layers, that then sat above and, and used this unique hardware. Okay, so that's what the architecture looked like back at the beginning. That is not what it looks like anymore. Okay, in fact, I'll explain as I go through this how we got from where we were then to where we are today. But one of the ways that I have modified this um, modified this presentation from past years is that I'm trying to going to try to show you sort of all in one story for each of these uh, parts of the architecture what the steps were. But before I do that, let me just show you what the architecture looks like today, okay? The architecture today, yes, still has the MI. You can see it in the middle of that pink box down there. But we have had to do far more integrating of things above and below the MI so that we could make best use of the core of what the lowest level of the operating system does. Things like tasking and queuing and, and the mirror technology, install and serviceability, they underlie everything. If you tied this back to what 
we would have looked at in the previous chart about being the horizontal microcode. Much of that stuff that was in the horizontal microcode is now in that gray box that I show you at the bottom here, but it's not actually separate. Okay, back then it was. Now it's not, it's all incorporated here, but all of this stuff builds on top of it. And a lot of the things that we do actually sit above XPF, above OS 400. Um, so things like our web services server, the tools that we use for doing development like RDI, RDS, Merlin, and so on, they sit above the operating system level, but they take advantage of the things that are there. Okay, so I, again, I will describe for you the evolution of this part of the MI as I go through this, but I want you to understand things look way different today than they did before. And one of the biggest ways that it looks different is because of the stuff on the right-hand side there where we've got this whole AIX operating environment called PACE that allows us to do open source and Java, which kind of crosses the line between operating system and things sitting in the operating system. 